Thanks for checking out this No Spoilers movie review. This is for Tigers Are Not Afraid. It is a Shudder exclusive and it is a 2017 film, but obviously it's just gotten its release in the United States as a Shudder exclusive. So um, when I say no spoilers for these reviews, I mean no spoilers as in I'm not going to tell you what's happening in the film, like the actual events or anything, but there is like thematic spoilers that I'll talk about and say, oh, I believe there's a metaphor of this, but I won't tell you specifically what it is in the film. So just know that going into this. Now, this is a film that's actually garnered a lot of praise, and so there's been a lot of hype around it uh, as it's been about to hit Shudder, and it just hit Shudder when I'm re um, reviewing this in like less than a week ago. It was like on Thursday of this week. So um, there's been a lot of hype about it, seen a lot of people watching it. One of the big reasons for the hype is that it got a lot of uh, attention from people like Stephen King, Guillermo del Toro, who are obviously very highly respected within the horror community. So whenever they're saying things about a film, people are like, boom, gotta see it. it makes a lot of sense. So I get it. I was very excited for this film, and I will say off the bat, I'm not going to tell you my star rating yet, do that at the end, I did like it. it. It is a good film, but I will also say that it seems less horror than I thought it was going to be. Um, a lot of people kind of bill it as, oh, it's like a fairy tale horror film that's tied into real life. I think it fits more into the drama genre with the way it's done, and it actually feels a little bit to me, like people have kind of um, compared it to Guillermo del Toro's like uh, Devil's Backbone and Pan's Labyrinth. Now, I think it is kind of like Devil's Backbone, but I think it's kind of opposite of Pan's Labyrinth, where Pan's Labyrinth is kind of very heavy on the horror and fairy tale combined. And that's kind of like the main portion of the movie. And then kind of the real life stuff, you you need to figure out the tie-ins uh, between the two that way. And it's more of like, like I'm saying, like, if it makes sense, like the substance is the horror fairy tale. And then the, the real life tie-ins are kind of more fleeting. I won't say fleeting, but they're less substantial and you just kind of need to figure out how you tie that into the horror fairy tale. Whereas Tigers Are Not Afraid is more, it's more of the real life and real life horror, the horror of real life. Um, but the fairy tale horror portion is significantly less and you need to figure out how that little portion ties into the real life horror. So for that reason, I kind of feel like it fits more into the drama genre, but there surely are well, there definitely are, like, horror aspects to the film, and there's also, like, fantasy aspects to the film. Um, so, but it, to me, it didn't feel like much horror as in what you think of with horror genre. It was more, like I was saying, real-life horror. The horrors of being alive in a terrible situation as a kid, which makes it even tougher. So that's the other thing. If, you, if you're watching this review and you haven't seen the movie yet, uh, I would recommend... Well, I would just let you know, because I don't know what your preference is, that um, it deals with kids in terrible situations a lot. So if that's something that's a very touchy situ uh, subject for you, maybe you shouldn't see the film. But I personally think that kind of everyone should see this film because it, it has some very important themes and topics that come up that I think everyone should kind of be confronted with in a way. So um, it's an important film for that reason, I think. So this, uh, this is written and directed by Issa Lopez. Now, Issa Lopez is pretty well-known filmmaking-wise in Mexico, apparently, uh, because she's won a bunch of literary awards. She's had a lot of success with the movies she's made down there, as well as uh, TV shows that she's been involved with. So um, already well-known in Mexico, not super well-known in the United States. So maybe with Tigers Are Afraid coming to the U.S., that'll kind of change that. So we'll see. Okay. So this, I might, I'm might, i probably going to read some of the stuff I, I put in my notes verbatim because I was really formulating intentionally how I was writing these things. So this film is to make people think about the impact of adult-created violence in a child's environment and what that does to them. So this isn't really a spoiler because it's in the synopsis of the film before you would see it, um, kind of like the log line and everything. Uh, it's set in Mexico against the backdrop of a society involved in drug cartel. So so it's it's some real life stuff that actually does go on. 
I mean, it's it's a fictional story about kids. It's not like based on real life, but the situation of the drug cartel violence in cities in Mexico is real. So it's taking something real life and putting a fictionalized story into it. But there's a lot of, I guarantee there's a lot of truth in it as well, though. And it kind of hits on something that a lot of people don't think about, which is children's, a, a child's role in this, which is a forced role in all of this, where, you know, there's a lot of violence going on around them. They haven't chosen this. They're put into this environment. You know, adults are killing each other. Adults are end up killing kids. There's a lot of death and a lot of terribleness all around them. And it's about them trying to survive, really. And, yeah, I'll kind of talk more about that with the things I've written in here. So it covers children who are left with nobody and fend for themselves. And those, and a few uh, in the beginning, you kind of, well, I'm not going to say that because it's a little spoilery. But uh, it's basically about kids who are left to fend for themselves. Now, this is something that's, it's been talked about a little bit, and not so much in the context of Mexico and the drug cartels, but more in the context of, over the years, Brazil, like a large amount of um, homeless children in Brazil. Uh, so this is kind of different it, in the sense that it's bringing this up in Mexico and saying, look, you know, this drug violence, the, these cartels, it's it's leaving these kids behind. And it's not just leaving these kids behind so they have to fend for themselves, but it's also putting them in just a horrible situation. Like even if they have families and adults to kind of protect them, they they're still in a really awful situation where they're faced with these terrible real violent awful events that happen in their lives and they try and process that uh which you know that changes a person it causes childhood trauma and that doesn't allow a kid to grow up exactly the way they should be able to grow up which is protected and able to be kind of like carefree and be a kid like have a fun uh carefree upbringing a, a good environment and this kind of speaks like in this film to the issue of adult society letting children down you know adult society has been has become so focused on greed and revenge especially in this story that they could care less about the future which is you know a younger generation they could care less about what they should be doing which is protecting these children who they're bringing into the world uh, they should be giving them the best opportunity they can, and they're not doing that at all because they're more focused on making money and being powerful and getting revenge on people. And children become, um, they get stuck in the in in the uh, in the middle, and they get, I mean, they basically get stuck in the crossfire. You know, realistically, actually being killed, and you know, mentally being scarred by everything. So I. And this is why I'm saying that I was saying that I think it's an important film and I really think everyone should see it because it makes these things a reality. And a lot of people don't think about it and you should think about it. You should be very cognizant of these things. Um, you watch from, okay, so I, I wrote this from my perspective. I'm saying if you watch it from my perspective and, and see the trauma and fear of violence weaving itself into the being of who these children are and keeping them from experiencing carefree innocence, which all children reserve, uh, deserve. And that's the thing. Like when I was watching this film, like you could see the events of it and its immediate impact on these kids and their psyches. And to me, I could just see like, like I wrote, like the weaving of these horrible things into the personalities of the kids and it messes them up, obviously, and it will mess them up for the future. And it kind of makes me think that, you know, you're starting from a base of terrible with, with that generation then, with all those kids exposed to what's going on in this film. So it can, I can't, I'm not going to say it can only get worse, but it increases the chance that things are going to get worse because their perspective of what the world is versus what the world should be is very, very different. It's more harsh. So there's more of a chance for when that generation gets older for things just getting worse than that because they are already at their baseline. They think, well, things are terrible instead of having a more um, idealistic view of things. So I thought that was important to point out. Um, speaks to a society focused so much on greed and revenge 
that it stopped caring about its kids in future. Yeah, I was. That's what I, I already said that. But that but that also made me think about it's not just in these violent situations. Like if you think about what's going on in the United States corporations and the amount of focus on money and the allocation of how money is. And it's all about money at the top and forget everyone below that because, you know, let's be honest, corporations, I'm sorry, it's a little political ish, but it's actually the real, I mean, it's a real situation. Like this is what's happening. Corporations at the top, you know, they have all the money. So they basically control all the politicians because where does the money for campaigning come from and how do they make real money? from corporations so who have all the money and there's just been a focus of flowing even more money upward so with that happening you're making sure that children don't have the opportunity to have the upbringings that they should where you know in a situation where wealth is significantly more evenly distributed so that's just my opinion i'm not trying to tell everyone how to think um so my apologies if you view this as just like a ridiculous political whatever, but I just saw that tie in between what's going on there and what's going on in the United States from an economic standpoint. So it's like physical violence in one economic violence in a sense in another. And it's kind of leaving a lot of children behind, especially lower income because like, I, like I'm saying, like in this movie, like they don't choose what environment they're brought into, but then it also kind of makes me think of, you know, the impact of, of, of a bad environment on children with a broken home, you know, and that happens everywhere in the world, you know, a, a two spouses who can't get along, who involve the kids, throw them in the middle of things when they actually should just, you know, take care of everything in private and leave the kids totally out of it. You know, when they allow them to be put in the middle or they intentionally put them in the middle, it causes not exactly the same, but a, a sort of kind of uh, similar trauma where it really messes up the kid's perspective and baseline personality of what what society is what the world is and how they are um if you don't protect your younger generations from the ills of society the decline will only get worse when they grow up that was the thing i was talking about earlier where i was like i don't know if this is 100 percent, but it's just a thought i had it's just a theory that it could cause that so forced to grow up, the kids in this film create their own family unit, including taking care of each other and giving adult advice like eat your peas. That's one of the really interesting things about this is that you see that when these kids have nobody but each other, they kind of start to create their own family unit naturally. It's like, okay, you know, we're, we have to take care of each other. So they just fall into these roles of like, you know, we're the older kids, we'll take care of the younger kids. And there's a really important moment that's not really a spoiler where it's kind of like eat your peas because those are your vegetables. Like that's a very, very grown up thing that kids would never, ever focus on as actual kids like coming up in a carefree, you know, nice environment. So it really, it's a small thing and it seems kind of trivial, but it really does drive that point home of, these kids are not living as kids. They're forced to be more adult than they should. Um, the fairy tale aspect is used to show, ch show child coping that distance them from the reality of their actual world. So it's like, like placing a filter on the world so they can more easily digest the horrors. Yeah, that's like the fairy tale aspect, even though, it, like I was saying, it's not super prominent in this. It's used here and there. And it shows, it, it's like a barrier that the kids use to filter their experiences through, to kind of try and soften it for their child minds, to kind of preserve themselves in a sense. It's self-preservation, really, so that they're not 100% um, exposed, feel 100% exposed to the violence and the terrors of what's actually going on. Uh, and I think it's effectively done in the film. There are a few metaphors for the kids as tigers, so tying into the title of Tigers Are Not Afraid. So being taken from their families and caged, much like an actual tiger who is, you know, in captivity, uh, but also resilient and ferocious in the face of captivity, as the kids themselves are captives of the violent society 
that they have not chosen to be in, much like when tigers are taken from their normal environments, where a kid's normal environment should be, like I'm saying, carefree and very kid-like, and then placed in a cage. These kids are placed in a cage. They're placed in the society they didn't want to be a part of that has definitely caged them, took has taken all their opportunities away, basically, and they have to figure out a new way to live, just like tigers. But they also, you know, get this resilience like the caged tigers do as well. Like, they they figure out a life based on that. It's not ideal, but it is what it is, basically. Uh, it's a powerful film that has a lot to say, and it does it well. I think it's a pretty succinct, easy thing to say. You can probably tell that I was going to say something like that, because I've kind of already have said something like that when I was saying that everyone should really see this. It's very important. So it, it is a powerful film. It's well-written. So it's, uh, I already talked about it being more real-life horror and more drama. Uh, it's And it's the opposite of Pan's Labyrinth. I already talked about that. So let me go more to, that. that's kind of all I have to say about like the story and thematic things and stuff like that. So let me go a little bit more to the technical type things with the actual film. The animations, I think, are really cool in this, and they play well, and they add to the fairy tale portion of the film, which, like I said, is pretty small, but it's there. Um, and it helps, the animations actually help to show a child perspective. And the animations are tied into uh, graffiti, which I think looks really good. So the design of it is really smart in the sense that it looks good, but it's also very childlike, which is important for its tie-in with the film to actually like feel like it works. Um, the CG in this, the computer graphics, actually look pretty good. I was very happy with it. Um, and I think part of what helps it is that I don't think this film was shot in high definition. That or the lighting is so is so off throughout the whole thing. Not in a bad way. Like it's it's intentionally like that to kind of be more gritty and and muted and and depressing, to be honest. Um, so I think that the, that helps the CG because when you have something in high definition, so, so say you have like a, like something CG in high definition and it's in broad daylight, it's going to be very easy for people to see the issues with the CG and, and that it doesn't really look like it fits in that instance because everything looks so crisp. So I think how the film is done, the CG looks good and then how it how everything else is with the environment and the lighting and i don't think being done in high definition helps with blending the cg in so looks good uh the camera work is really shaky throughout this not always there are actually a few moments where you could tell they were like using a tripod or something to you know keep it steady and i think those are the moments that they were intentionally trying to make more cinematic so it makes sense to me the difference between when they're using something like a tripod versus when they're doing the shaky the shaky cam and someone just you know has it on their shoulder most likely um but for me personally it bothers me a bit when there's so much of the camera moving and being shaky i understand that it kind of adds more to like a realistic feel like you're looking with your eyes and walking and you know moving with the characters and stuff like that but at the same time like i'm watching a movie and i'd rather see it in a more cinematic way because it also has a tendency to make me um a little nauseous at times I don't know if other people experience that or not. Uh, great location use in this film because uh, it plays right into the feel, the feel of the movie and the story. Uh, they did an excellent, excellent job scouting locations and and deciding on which ones they were going to use because it looks good, it looks bleak, it looks dirty. It is very appropriate for the the feel of the story and the story itself. I mean, it it works great, and that's one of the big things that stood out to me as a strength for making this film work in addition to, you know, the writing being good. Uh, and the last thing I have to say about it is the kids in this film did a really good job for the roles they had to fill. Uh, they did a good job casting it, and um, really good job, kids. It is hard, I imagine, to find children who can do a really good job acting. Um, so, super awesome. So, all that said, that's my review on Tigers Are Not Afraid. I enjoyed it. Um, it's not a perfect film. I think it is one of those situations where like, I got really hyped up for it because everyone's like, Oh my gosh, Oh my gosh, Tigers are not afraid. It's coming. And Stephen King said this and Guillermo del Toro said this. So I was like, Oh man, this is, ooh, it's going to be amazing. 
So when you go into movies like that, you're always going to experience a level of disappointment because it's never, ever going to live up to the hype. But that said, you got to, you know, when you're watching the film, you have to try and step back from that. And I did. I did try to do that. So I think I, on my five-star scale with half stars in play, I'm going to give it a four-star rating. This is a good film. This is not, not, not a perfect film. Um... But it is quite good, and I think it is quite important. So I'm going four stars on it. Now, everyone out there, if you've seen it, go ahead and put some comments down there. What are your feelings on it? Uh, what are your feelings on my review of it? If you haven't seen it, are you excited to see it? Um, are you not going to see it because you've heard that it's super bleak and has some tough material? I'd be interested in knowing. Um, do me a favor real quick. Hit that subscribe. It literally takes you a second, and it's totally painless. And it helps me out a lot. Uh, I've just been trying to get more and more subscribers, which I've been getting a lot more subscribers lately. Um, although if I get to a certain level, I might be able to consider doing maybe some live streams to do like some uh, some Q&A stuff. And also just talk about a lot of different films that I've seen because obviously it takes a lot of time for me to just put out these reviews. If I'm doing like a live stream, we can I can you know get people's questions as I'm doing the live stream and kind of answer them based on films that, you know, you might have some questions about that I've, that we've both seen. So anyway, hit that subscribe. I really appreciate it. And thanks for checking out the video until next time. Keep it brutal.